Bob Bailey, or I should say Dr. Bob Bailey, is a trainer who uh, lives in Arkansas, and I'm kind of uh, obsessed with him. He was uh, both business partner and husband to uh, Marion Breland Baby Bailey, also doc- Dr. Marion Breland Bailey, uh, who together with her first husband, Keller Breland, and Bob Bailey, who came to work with them um, before Keller's untimely death in the early 1960s, the three of them built this company called Animal Behavior Enterprises, which did so many really <laughs> unique things in the realm of animal training. They train animals mostly for commercial purposes to, to do things that um, were pretty incredible. And uh, I, one thing they did was like create these kind of like, I guess maybe you call it like a diorama with moving parts in it for animals. And they train like over a hundred different species of animals, but like an animal in this like lucite, basically Skinner box, they would train these animals to do all kinds of crazy, funny tricks, like play basketball, play baseball, dance, play tic-tac-toe. And I actually, um, and then they would ship these all around the world. And I actually grew up at the arcade that um, I used to go to as a kid. Uh, in Manhattan had a, a dancing chicken and a tic-tac-toe playing chicken that I was um, pretty obsessed with. Actually, my whole family, we, we like all loved the tic-tac-toe chicken and would discuss the tic-tac-toe chicken. Never in my childhood did I think about where this chicken came from and whether the chicken was actually trained or how it was trained. Totally did not cross my mind. Um, I, if I guess if I thought about it, I would have thought the dancing chicken was like being electrocuted and that's why it was jumping or something, although I was completely off base. Uh, anyway, these, these um, amusements uh, were part of what Animal Behavior Enterprises did, among other things, which included training animals for the military, uh, training animals for um, film. I first really started to learn about Bob Bailey in 2016 when I went to chicken training camp. I went to one week of what is actually a five-week program of um, this program that was initially started by Bob Bailey Uh, and is now taught, uh, unfortunately not very regularly, I think, by um, Parveen Farhoudi, who uh, is a trainer also in New York City. And I, anyway, I learned so much from this one-week session. I would have gladly done the five-week session if I could have justified taking that time off of work. Um, You know, the idea being basically, like, if you can train a chicken, you can train any animals because these, um, you know, the laws of learning, operant conditioning, classical conditioning, these, all of this is not species specific. And when you're working with a chicken, you're working with an animal that cannot be physically <laughs> manipulated, uh, does not respond well to punishment. And we train them to do incredible things. Um, during the session I did, it was about um, differentiation. So we were teaching. Uh, we, we were learning how to train a chicken to differentiate between different shapes, different colors, um, and uh, anyway, if you ever get a chance to train a chicken, especially with Parveen Farhoudi or Bob Bailey do. Uh, so I, I started first learning about Bob ba- Bailey there um, and uh, quickly understood that I was studying with a student of um, of his, uh, the, the incredible Parveen, uh, and that Bob Bailey was kind of a student of the Breelands, uh, including his, his late wife, um, who later became Marianne Breland Bailey, um, and they were the first graduate students of B.F. Skinner in his lab um, in the days before he went to Harvard. Uh, Breland, the Breelands um, worked on his Project Pigeon, which was Uh, an effort uh, to train pigeons to guide kamikaze (laughs) missiles. 
Uh, if you listen to the bonus on the history of uh, my brief history of dog training, the bonus episode last week, I talked a little bit about that and about um, the the Breelands in general. Anyway, so I, I understood I was in this direct lineage of people who have touched um, people who have touched who were touched by um, B.F. Skinner, who, as uh, you will know if you listen to this podcast, is a hero of mine. Uh, so I've been um, trying to get um, Bob Bailey on the podcast to talk to him about animal behavior enterprises um, uh, history, and um, we actually I, I, we actually agreed to do something that is so exciting. I'm so excited to to be sharing this with you all. What we're going to do is screen the short film he has called "Patient Like the Chipmunks," which talks about the history of operant conditioning and animal behavior enterprises and uh, his work uh, and his work with the Breelands. And then we are going to uh, have a a live conversation after that, including time for a QA. and a on April 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern. I will uh, post a link to the show notes, but you can sign up at schoolforthedogs.com slash Bailey. It is uh, going to be ten dollars, um, a total steal. Uh, I think you you can buy this video by itself on his website for, I think like forty dollars. Um, all the proceeds will be going to the Marion Breland Bailey Fund at Henderson University in Arkansas, a Marion Breland Bailey Scholarship Fund. Um, so I hope that you will join us. And um, I thought for the weeks between now and then, once a week, if I can, I'm going to just read something um, either by the Breelands or by Bob Bailey uh, that I have um, learned from. Today, I want to read a page from Bob's website, which uh, you must go to. It's like an artifact. I don't think it's been touched since... (laughs) 2000 maybe it's so it's it's like old looking but like in the best way um and i found uh (laughs) among other things i love on this site is there's a it there's a page devoted to there's an entire page devoted to ukrainian eggs and uh how to decorate ukrainian eggs i don't know why i guess i guess uh dr bob bailey is really into ukrainian eggs (laughs) anyway uh it's behavior1.com. The page I'm going to read is behavior1.com slash page 9html which is a very bright yellow page that inexplic- inexplicably has a tiny, uh, tiny parrot in the corner holding an American flag. Um, anyway, I, I found this page a few months ago and thought, oh, wow, this is, there's so much important stuff on this web page that is, um, you could print it out and put all of this on, um, on a business card. It's that, it's, it's that concise. Well, maybe, maybe an index card. (laughs) And I think incredibly useful for any dog trainer. Uh, I printed it out and hung it up by my desk. And, uh, I'm just going to read you um, this, uh, this short little web page, maybe, maybe it's 500 words long. It's called Suggestions for Better Training and was written by Dr. Bob Bailey and Dr. Marion Breland Bailey. Point one, training is a mechanical skill. Practice training procedures without the animal. Practice clicking. Practice giving the food, toy, or praise. Practice moving and training at the same time. Practice, practice, practice then train the animal. Point two, think, plan, do. These are three separate behaviors, don't mix them. First, let your imagination soar. Consider every training idea without concern for practicality. Next, filter out the wild, impractical schemes and build a detailed, doable pathway to the desired behavior. Finally, carry out your plan. Point three, training is simple, but not easy. Training should be the application of simple principles. Your demands on the animal, plus the animal's own wants and needs, can make training complex. 
The more complex the behavioral task, the more vague your direction, the more complicated the training. Simplify each step of training. Give unambiguous direction and precise reinforcements. Most trainers should be behavioral splitters rather than lumpers. Solving uh, point four, solving behavioral problems. Look for simple solutions rather than complexity. Consider first problems of timing, criteria, rate of reinforcement. Timing. In casual training, clicker timing is forgiving. In precision training, clicker timing is not forgiving. You get what you click, not what you want. Imprecise timing of reinforcement, clicking, is by far the most frequent trainer error in the experience of the Breelands and the Baileys. Criteria. Trainers should decide, in advance of the behavior, what will and will not be reinforced. If the trainer waits until the behavior occurs before deciding, the click will invariably be late and inconsistent. Rate of reinforcement. Training must be worthwhile for all, for the animal and for the trainer. The animal must get something it wants or needs. The trainer must get behavior or some other satisfaction out of training. Reinforce often, especially er early in training. Point five, ratios. Don't use a ratio in training unless you need to. The trainer has a choice. Ratios are overused and often improperly used. Properly used continuous reinforcement plus fluency training give moderately strong and very precise behavior. Reserve ratios for highly repetitive, long duration, or, or other special behaviors. Six, primary reinforcement and reinforcers. Food, play, social, and other stimuli filling a need or want may be useful in training. The primary reinforcer strengthens behavior. It can matter what, when, and how the primary reinforcement is delivered. As much thought should go into the delivery of the primary reinforcer as goes into the secondary or bridge. Click for action, feed for position. Sign up for this screening and conversation April 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern with me and the one and only Dr. Bob Bailey. Hope to see you there just ten dollars and uh you can get there at schoolforthedogs.com slash bailey i'll also put a link in the show notes i'm also going to link to the webpage behavior1.com slash page nine and also i will link to a really nice short little video that the late dr sophia yin did interviewing uh dr bob bailey uh, in the early 2000s about chicken camp. And you can look forward to another reading from the ba- Bailey, Breland Bailey, Breland <laughs> canon next week.